Hi, I'm Don Moores, and welcome to Montgomery Week in Review. After the success of West Virginia's teachers in raising their salaries after going on strike, teachers in other states around the country are using the same tactic in the hopes of getting more livable salaries for themselves. Jane DeWinter is here to comment on this important nationwide story. The National League of Women Voters has had strong positions on gun control for over a quarter century. Elaine Apter, co-president of Maryland's League of Women Voters, is here to explain the League's positions and the discussions that are occurring in the League in Montgomery County this month. Springtime is beautiful, but it's also a great time for criminals as they try out scams directed at vulnerable citizens as they offer home repairs and free work, especially to the elderly. Gabriel Carrera, Assistant State's Attorney from Montgomery County, is here to tell us about the most dangerous of these scams. The primary elections of 2018 promise to focus or feature ballots with enormous numbers of candidates. Oh, that paper that's going to be printed. It is probable that election judges will be busier than ever as voters will be confused. Alberto Zelaya from the Board of Elections will explain who can be involved in making voting smoother for everyone as he works to recruit everyone he can to be an election judge. How are you doing, Jane? I am well, thank Welcome you. Welcome back. Thank you. Education is your thing. Yes. Economist is what you are trained in striking teachers, uh, looking for more salaries. <laughs> that really is kind of the nexus of, of, of your interest and your training. Right. Well, yes. I, I won't say that I had strike strike. No, but in terms of economics. <laughs> but, I mean, right, we're talking exactly. about the economic exactly. importance of teachers and, mm -hmm. and being taken really kind of Right. And I was actually granted. surprised in trying to just get at, you know, get up to speed on the story that nationally mm -hmm. the average teacher salary has been completely flat since 1990. And the salary, teacher salaries have declined 5% since 2010. So We're talking about in, in relation to inflation. Right, in relation right. to inflation. So, you know, I think if you were from Montgomery County, you might think that teachers have done, you know, all right with, you know, mm -hmm. keeping up with, with inflation, right. um, except for some bumps during the recession, right. et cetera. But nationally, it's been tough. At the same time, we keep hearing these terrible stories of, school systems not having enough money for supplies, teachers out of their own pockets mm -hmm. doing the, you know, buying those things in the classrooms. It's, what a, what a horrendous situation for these poor teachers. I, I was listening on the news the other day where, where, where teachers said, look, I'm working two and three jobs outside, in addition mm -hmm. to this, otherwise we'd be on food stamps in Oklahoma. Well, How is right. possible? It's, right. it's also, I would assume, a problem in recruiting teachers. Exactly, I mean, teachers. and that's what they found that a lot of, uh, you know, when Oklahoma teachers were striking, they heard a lot of stories of people moving to Texas because the average salary in, for a teacher in Texas versus Oklahoma is more than ten thousand dollars difference. Right. So yes, it's very difficult to difficult to keep teachers. And the other thing is, is that for all of these states where teacher salaries have been declining in real terms and education cuts, conditions are terrible. I mean, conditions when I mean like. The furniture in your classroom is falling apart. Right. There's not enough staff to cover all of just sort of like the basic workings of the school. Uh, your class size has probably gone way up. Um, there were a lot of teachers that were interviewed that were saying that they didn't even have enough chairs. Saw one thing that was an illustration of a plastic chair that had two big cracks and right. it was called like the cheek squeezer or something because you sit on it and then you're basically attached to and it. That's, in fact, it would be very difficult too because there's this big movement about uh, promoting STEM because we're falling behind globally on mm -hmm. the quality of students or profession professionals coming out of the school system. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're blessed in Montgomery County. We have exceptional teachers, mm -hmm. but it's it's a national issue, and especially we're falling behind the eight ball, and you have these schools that are falling apart and uh, being you know un, untended to. It, it mm -hmm. will affect us in the long run, gener generationally as well. Right. Well, in these cuts, um, you know, in addition to really impacting the number and the quality of teachers and whatever it has a huge impact on the education of students in oklahoma most of the rural areas have gone to a four-day school week um, to save money it saves electricity and whatever not having to heat the building it's going to save bus bus mm -hmm. gasoline and bus repairs because you're only running the buses four days instead of five but 
you know, you lose out on education and then you think of the impact on the family is that if your parents were working, what do you do with that? Exactly. Your child now on that fifth day. You know, this reminds me of some of the arguments that uh, uh, were, were present when the Department of Education was created, or HEW and then Department of Education, that we have a responsibility nationally for these kids who are being who are falling behind uh, in different places. Why should Montgomery County do so well with Mississippi? That was a mm -hmm. big thing with kids in Mississippi. Well, we're now in a with an administration. States' rights is huge. Um, is this something that the nation should care about, or is this something that just hey Oklahoma should take care of itself? Well, I, I think that we're all invested in making sure that kids are growing up and learning something because as a nation, it certainly doesn't do us any good to have half the children in, you know, the country growing up and not really being able to read. You know, they might not live in your state now, but you might right. be moving <laughs> there. You might, you know, you might have a business me trying to find people to work. I mean, right. I think it's pretty clear education is a public good that we right. all are invested and, in. About a minute to go. Yeah. Even in Montgomery County that we say is doing so well, housing and for a teacher to really live in Montgomery County can be a hardship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and very quickly, I want to throw in, because it's so important, is the League of Women Voters <laughs> is having a school board forum mm -hmm. on April 25th at Gaithersburg High School. And these are the people that are going to work with your budget and, and repairing things. And the Board of Elections and will the, be there registering the, voters. Oh, <laughs> and registering voters. So, yeah. you know, it really is. It comes down to local, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you want, you know, good school board. Right. Ten seconds left. Fine. So I just wanted to say, I do think that some of, like, what we would say is, like, the labor action and the fact that there mm -hmm. have been these demonstrations mm -hmm. and strikes and walkouts and whatever, I think that ties into what's going on nationally on just yeah. a whole number of issues shoes that this seems to be the time exactly. to get out in public and express your, your feeling view. empowered yes right. get some done. well Jane I, I hope you feel empowered to come back uh, <laughs> I, I will surprise on the story <laughs> thanks Elena after welcome back hi she gave us a great lead-in didn't she <laughs> well I, I'm not sure what the lead-in was versus you just seizing the thing and sticking <laughs> <in> the <laughs> <laughs> We turn from education to gun control, and, and, and Jane uh, uh, sort of foreshadowed a little bit of this by saying that it's linked, the, the actions here think that in labor, linked with what's going on uh, around the country and standing up for, for gun control. League of Women Voters has been out ahead of the entire country. Yeah, in as talking usual. About so, yeah. what's, so what started the, the League's uh, concern about, about guns? Well, it was interesting because the positions came about in the, the early 1990s, and it was semi-assault weapons were beginning to come in, but the main thing was handguns and Saturday night specials. Um, the Saturday night special it was... It, that yeah. was a cheap handgun that you could get and, and just run out, and it was usually um, used against a spouse or somebody that you were enraged with. You could hmm. run out and get a gun and, and shoot mm -hmm. somebody. Um, and this was really most of the problems mm -hmm. that, at least publicly, yeah. uh, with guns. And so the league looked into it and they were for a ban on Saturday night specials. But they also came up with the position that um, assault weapons, uh, semi automatic, and handguns really, their proliferation, and that's probably one of the key words. Uh, was a detriment to citizens and could harm citizens of the country. And so the idea was that there should be some controls. There should be background checks. There should be like a five-day waiting period. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing I thought was interesting is there should be, li the licensing fees should cover uh, these background mm -hmm. checks. Well, and education and safety and things like well, that. Well, real quick, I mean, we've come a long way. Now that we're now the justification right. for having assault weapons in the hands of, of citizens is, well, how can we defend ourselves against the police if they become rogue, if we don't have the same weapons the police have? I mean, it's, a, it's, it's in those uh, 30 years or 28 years, 25 years, we've really, the NRA and, and, and gun advocates have really done a number on on how this this yes. whole issue is presented it, it, how, how have you responded to that or evolved to now what what's the what's, um, what's the big issue well one of the things and we're lobbying on i'm lobbying on capitol hill actually next tuesday 
um, basically would be that these semi-assault weapons were really to kill mass amounts of people. They weren't, I love to shoot a 22 rifle, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I would not do target shooting with a, a uh, AK-47, yeah, exactly. basically. I mean, they're meant for, for killing people. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the recent high school shooting at Parkland has sort of affected the discussion in a particular um, way? I, I definitely think that that is something, and that's where dialogue has come up, and, and they're not letting it drop. And, and the marches, we've had all these mm -hmm. marches and things, mm -hmm. whether they make a difference, but already in the, the uh, budget, Bill, the national budget, you've got the, that they, you can now study mm -hmm. right. uh, gun violence. No money, but you can study it. So, and there is money for school safety mm -hmm. and things. And that seems to be now the focus is school safety, where still the majority of people are shot by a handgun mm -hmm. um, at a moment's rage by somebody they know. So um, it's important to have these right. backgrounds. Well, I mean, I think that my observation, and I'm just wondering whether you, you know, you've seen this too, is that the NRA has really um, shaped, the con shaped the angle, shaped mm -hmm. the conversation in terms of focusing so much on the Second That's Amendment the and, and constitutional rights, and has really created uh, this thing where um, if you have any interest in a gun at all, of course you're like firmly on the side of the Second Amendment and don't do anything to encroach that. But it does seem like the Got discussion is changing a little bit with with these kids who are willing to call right. out the NRA and publicize. Yes, and, and I love the, the fact that somebody said, you know, you have not had an AK-47, <laughs> you know, looking at you at the face and, and being mm -hmm. shot at. Um, but I, I agree with that, that it is changing, and that's why uh, the league units or discussion groups this uh, month are doing, we're looking at five articles from different viewpoints to see how we can move the legislation um, along. It's beginning to change in states, and even Florida has done some legislation. The question is, can we keep it up? Um, and the, the NRA and the Second Amendment, they're just so afraid of that slope. You mm -hmm. know, um, right. you mm -hmm. can't, yeah. That's the, it. That's it. That's all we can do. You got it. Unfortunately, to be continued. To be continued. And I, and I think what I'm hoping is Capitol Hill is going to be afraid of you, Elena. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm there. <laughs> Good luck on Tuesday. Thank you. We'll be right back after a break that we've got to take. Yeah. Now, you have to speak up to me. And we're back now, out of great respect, Mr. <laughs> Assistant State's Attorney. Welcome here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so tell us about what this issue is. What's, what's you know, the, you, we talked in the, in the opening, folks coming in from different parts of the region to take advantage of the elderly and, and, and vulnerable in our community? I mean, basically, it's unlicensed contractors that are coming up from usually around Culpeper, Virginia, and they come to Montgomery County, and they target especially elderly individuals, people with diminished capacity, and do work that doesn't need to be done, is shoddy and effective, and they charge insanely exorbitant fees for this work. Now, there's a, there's a title or there's a, a group name for these folks? What's the, what's? So Montgomery County Police Department has classified them as woodchucks, so we call them woodchucks. It's, it's unique, but I think it fits the bill. So it's well. a woodchucks play, uh, play. So, so they're coming in, so, so they'll, the, how do they identify uh, their marks? Basically, they'll go they'll go through affluent affluent neighborhoods, look for you know not a lot of children around. They'll look for wheelchair accessible ramps to homes. They'll even case areas to see if people are alone and look for handicap signs in the car. It can be identified in a bunch of different ways. Sometimes they'll, if they're lazy, they'll just go and knock on doors until they find someone. And they've got a little card saying call whatever to, to make it look like they're they're legitimate. You can see that on their trucks they'll display themselves as unlicensed. All these inv individuals are unlicensed, and they'll give you contracts that say that they're licensed and guarantees that they're licensed, but they are not. And they have cards, and they'll give you numbers to call. How can you um, 
find out? I mean, if they give you a card that has you know, some license number on it, how can you verify that? So we encourage people to go to the DLLR website. You can put someone's name. DLLR is what? Uh, Department of Labor and Licensing and that's Regulation. A, that's a county uh, agency? That's in Maryland. That's a state of Maryland. Yeah. So state of Maryland Department of Labor and Licensing and you can you right. can go on the website and while you're there you can put in the name of the individual you can put in the name of their company uh -huh. and it's very easy to identify if those individuals are licensed or not I mean one of the things that we also encourage people to do is if you are getting these sort of contracts you know check out these individuals on Angie's list maybe talk to other contractors you may know mm -hmm. but most importantly if someone is doing door-to-door -door solicitation that is very concerning and you should be very you know afraid in that sort of situation and just you know, what, say thank you. What kind of an education system do you have to notify people that these people are out there? I think, you know, at the State's Attorney's Office in Montgomery County, we have a specialized unit for crimes against seniors and vulnerable adults. Uh, we do as much education as we can. We go out to different community centers, go to um, senior homes, different um, facilities, as well as the Montgomery County Police Department. I goes out and educates people all the time. I don't know if anyone has the Nextdoor app, but I see officers uh, coming around to neighborhoods all the time to uh, inform citizens about woodchuck scams commonly, especially this time of year. Springtime, after the winter, it's very common for this to occur, and also after major um, weather events. I think is should, it, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, should anybody ever believe it if someone knocks on your door and says, we, I was, we were doing work in your neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Is that ever true, or? <laughs> I mean, I, I can't, that, yeah. I'm not sure if that's always true, but, but one of the things that these guys do is after they get their claws in these people that aren't able to verify whether the work has been done because they have serious, you know, diminished medical c capacity, they'll go to their buddies down in Culpeper and be like, look, and they call them this, it's like, look, there's a granny up in Aspen Hill, Montgomery County, if you go up there and tell her you were cutting trees for me a week ago, she'll write you a check for $5,000. It is unbelievable and horrible. And I think also what's important about the, the a great offense is a, is, a, is a better defense. I think preventative, like you mentioned, taking the handicap sign off your dash, that's mm -hmm. the one big thing. Um, what other tips could you uh, give individuals uh, so they don't get, you know, targeted? I think one important thing especially is, mm -hmm. you know, better like I, left. sometimes, you know, if you live in the neighborhood mm -hmm. and you have someone that comes up mm -hmm. to you, if you know other people in your neighborhood, and maybe call the police and say that there's someone walking around. Mm -hmm. I verify that they're on license. I think that can be effective and maybe help someone out who doesn't have the resources or capacity to do it themselves. Okay, so, so, so treat our neighborhoods like a village. Right, I think that's a great suggestion. I mean, there's a bunch of things that's preventative. You know, don't write checks to individuals, write checks to companies. The, they'll have a third person that's there just to cash checks for them so they can sort of separate themselves from the, the fraudulent scheme. Also, um, Basically, like I said before, go on the DLL, DLLR website, <laughs> verify if they're actually licensed, and just be vigilant. And if you have family members that are elderly, and live alone, or maybe isolated in some way, do your best to monitor their bank accounts and see if there's irregular spending. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Give us, give the, the, our best to the uh, state's attorney and, and tell them that uh, we think you're doing a great job. Awesome, thank you so much. Thanks. Yes. Your Excellency. <laughs> How are you? Dr. Dr. Z is in the house. How are you? How are you? How are you? So are you going to come and just like, moan and complain uh, that no. uh, you, you don't have enough election judges? Yes, you know me, the wham wham. <laughs> so you would think with 700,000 registered voters that we would have individuals spilling out of our side of our windows or facility. It's not like that. Um, uh, what's interesting, um, our delegation, you know, they, the primary is over the summertime. Um, it's kind of one of those pinpoint spring break work. No, let's do the summer break. <laughs> and so it's challenging. Even my future vote program for our youth, uh, out of 1,500 vacant uh, available slots, I only filled so far 500. Uh, and, it's, and it's similar to the election judge. People are, are not available. And they don't know what's going on over the summer because school has been extended to the 15th June 24th, of June. right? So the election is June 26th. June 26th. Um, yeah. And so because they extended the school to the 15th, people are like modifying their summer breaks. And now we may not be here. And so I think it's important that individuals know that we need you. We need a, you have to be a live in Maryland, be registered to vote. 
and we're doing a big push at the high schools. Actually, I came from Rockville High School. <laughs> so we're able to recruit uh, 12 young individuals to serve as election judges. They registered to vote. We did a big wave uh, in uh, early uh, fall uh, in 2017, and we, reg we registered and recruited over 1,300. Now, it doesn't mean that they'll all serve, no. uh, and we're doing the second wave. So we're looking at our election judges because you know, the weekend generation judges, you know, they're getting older and health, uh, you know, the, the stamina working 15, 16, 17 hours is mm -hmm. not there. So when I started Future Vote in 2004 was the understanding that in a decade, our judges that were 65, 10 years ago will be 75. And so the students have been a blessing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's very important that we need all individuals from all cohorts mm -hmm. and we need As them you're saying today. This, People can learn about this and go to a website, right? Yes, to, to everything's on our judges. website. And what's um, that website? 777vote.org. Mm -hmm. They could also call our hotline, which is 240-777-8500. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a very simple process. You have to be registered to vote. Um, there's an online quiz that you will need to take. It's open browser, so it's not mm -hmm. like you're cheating. You just read the materials <laughs> and answer the multiple choices. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> the question is uh, name all the Democratic no, candidates no, no, council no, large by <laughs> alphabet? Of no, maybe like what time did the polls open? <laughs> 7 a.m. Um, it's really basic, but also ADA, special needs, and Section 203, right. as mm -hmm. you know, we implement English and Spanish in the entire election process. Are you recruiting judges? Do you need judges for the early voting too? As well, yes. And one of the great things that we've implemented several years ago, we have part-time positions. Mm. So we do have positions like openers, closers, greeters. So there is an availability to serve eight hours. Um, in the morning or in the afternoon, uh, evening, um, to facilitate that participation. Um, Alcohol served? No, 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 unfortunately, <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but People might be wondering, is this a volunteer thing that you it's do? It's a or? volunteer, but what's interesting, uh, you do, there is a stipend. So it ranges from $75 to 250 depending on the position. Um, students also can earn up to 25 SSL credits because they need 75 to graduate. Um, so they earn 25 per election or up to wow. $210. So when you tell a student who's a 17-year-old, a rising senior, well, I can make $420 volunteering, yeah. But you have to be registered to vote, attend training, do the quiz, serve, and five weeks later, we will mail you a check to your home address. Um, mm -hmm. So we're always looking for candidates, individuals to serve. Uh, no, we're not looking for more candidates. We're looking <laughs> no, for I mean, more volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but for so you're not discouraging people from running for office. <laughs> no, I never said that. Democracy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Democracy is number one. But <laughs> what's important is um, to all our voters, we do mail your sample ballot. So mm -hmm. on your sample ballot, we'll have all the contests and the multitude of candidates. So do your research. Um, before you vote on election day or early voting. We have 11 early voting sites. Um, we've added two new ones, uh, mm -hmm. which is, uh, Where? Uh, one is in Wheaton, uh, St. Um, I'm having a blank. Uh, St. Catherine? St. Catherine's uh, yeah. and the library, right. uh, yeah. which is the Claridge Room, because the school doesn't exist anymore, but the social hall is still there. Okay. Uh, and then also the other one is the uh, Sandy Spring uh -huh. uh, Fire Department, which is Station 40. There's another uh, Sandy Spring, which is Station 40, Four. That's not the one. It's Station Forty. Okay. Uh, but we will be sending information to all our and voters. And don't forget the Legal Women Voters Voters Guide and Vote Four One One. Exactly. That's a People great might resource. Not know. I mean, Less what, than a minute left. What mm -hmm. exactly does an election judge do? So what they do is they help check in voters if the individual has bilingual skills in Spanish or a multitude of beautiful languages that we have in the county. Mm -hmm. They could help that individual uh, assist them. Um, they help them if they need some assistance during a provisional process or explaining what provisional voting is. Um, we have a paper ballot, but also we have a ballot marking device for individuals who are maybe a functionally illiterate, blind, uh, or an, oh, they forgot their glasses. Um, they can't read the ballot. Um, so the judges, we will give them hands-on training. They mm -hmm. will help individuals through the process from A to Z. And we need a lot of individuals but to help But most out. of all judges, and we get to the kind of say, isn't the main thing, reason they're there, is, is to ensure that this is a fair Yes, process. we want to have, we have we, our goal is to have a transparent, right. fair, uh, and effective election day and early voting. We want to make that happen by getting more judges. Just Please do. You're out there. <laughs> thank you. You all, thanks for this great discussion. Really appreciate you being here. And thank all of you and the viewing audience for joining us for this week's edition of Montgomery Week in Review. I'm Don Moores, enjoying or inviting you to join us next week at this very same time.
things that you're able to get out. It's, 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 it's you know, pixie and it's 